Hello friends, my name is JJ, and we're doing a shorter video than usual this week because I am traveling. Anyway, a few weeks ago, I released an award-winning video featuring one-minute summaries of various world leaders from the early 1990s. I figure everyone should know. And while you guys more or less liked it, a couple of you said that you thought the list could use a few more names. So today, we are going to profile five more. Now, generally speaking, whenever I make a video based around a list of important things, I like to use someone else's list just because I think it forces me to be a bit more objective. It is more fun and educational, I think, for both you and me, when we attempt to analyze and understand someone else's assessment of what matters. In the first video, I analyzed 15 early 90s era world leaders featured in this little art display at the library. And when I was looking to add a few more names, I remembered that I had a book featuring a very similar collection of world leader portraits from around the same time. It is this book here, Scarf Land, by the great British cartoonist Gerald Scarf, one of my great artistic heroes. And while most of the world leaders he depicts are ones that we've already discussed, he does have a few that the first gallery left out. So let's take a look. Since the artist is British, you just know he had to include Margaret Thatcher, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom from 1979 to 1990. Thatcher is best remembered for being perhaps the most ideologically strident conservative to govern any Western nation during the late 20th century. And this was a time when there were quite a few conservative leaders running countries, so that's really saying something. Depending on your perspective, Thatcher was either incredibly principled or incredibly dogmatic when it came to her belief in the superiority of business over government or individualism over collectivism and her self-proclaimed do-it-yourself agenda made her fond of cutting the budget of government services or even privatizing them altogether. She is often said to have broken the strength of the British labor unions, which had grown very powerful in the 60s and 70s. In foreign affairs, Thatcher was a loyal ally of America under Ronald Reagan and shared his deep suspicion of communists and the Soviet Union. She was quite hawkish overall, fighting a war with Argentina over control of the tiny Falkland Islands, refusing to negotiate with terrorists in Northern Ireland, and defending some of Britain's most controversial allies, including General Pinochet in Chile and the apartheid regime in South Africa. Thatcher is still a hugely polarizing figure in modern Britain, although perhaps that's not surprising. On the other end of the political spectrum, we have Bob Hawke, the Labour Party Prime Minister of Australia from 1983 to 1991. Australian Prime Ministers are often not that famous outside of their country, in part because they often don't serve for very long. But during the 1980s, Bob Hawke was quite well known internationally, in part because he had a pretty aggressive foreign policy and explicitly sought to overcome the dominant understanding of Australia in those days, which was somewhere very isolated and irrelevant. By dramatically increasing global trade in particular, he sought to make Australia a country the world couldn't ignore. Though Hawke was pretty economically moderate overall, he remains a highly venerated figure among progressive Australians, given he was the architect of some of the country's more generous and popular social welfare programs, chiefly the Australian Medicare system, which is often the first thing Australians mention when you say his name. He also had a very casual, common guy sort of style, very relaxed and easygoing, which is a vibe that matters a lot in Australian culture. You can see in this cartoon he is crying, and crying in public was another thing he was associated with. Some found it a bit much, but to his supporters it was seen as a sign of his genuine compassion. Next up, we got Rajiv Gandhi, Prime Minister of India from 1984 to 1989. So Rajiv Gandhi became Prime Minister following the assassination of his mother, Indira Gandhi, who had been Prime Minister for much of the previous two decades. She was herself the daughter of India's first Prime Minister, so Rajiv's ascension, coupled with the fact that he was one of the less politically ambitious members of the Gandhi family, seemed to demonstrate that under the Congress Party, which had mostly run India since independence, the Indian government was becoming a kind of pseudo-monarch Nevertheless, young Mr. Gandhi won a big landslide election a few months later in what is often seen as having been a sympathy vote after his mother's murder. Rajiv only served a single term, however, and I think he is not really remembered as having been that great of a prime minister. But he also presided over a fairly difficult time for India, defined by a lot of tension and violence between the country's various 
ethnic and religious groups, as well as with India's neighbors. His mother was killed by Sikhs, mad at her treatment of Sikhs, and he himself was later killed by Tamil extremists, mad about his policies towards them. Having two prime ministers assassinated in a row really gave India a dark and scary reputation for a while. Next up, Francois Mitterrand, President of France from 1981 to 1995. Mitterrand was the first socialist president of France and the longest serving president in French history at 14 years. I would say he was a good example of one of those leaders who hangs around for such a long time that they sort of become synonymous with the image of their country in the eyes of the world. This was particularly the case with Mitterrand because he also seemed to embody so many traditional French stereotypes. You know, very cultured and haughty and libertine and very into being French with his nationalism sometimes superseding or contradicting other aspects of his left-wing politics. Even though he was a socialist, Mitterrand was not a radical. A lot of his tenure was guided by the idea that you could work towards socialist goals in slow and pragmatic ways that made peace with a free market economy. This was quite similar to the third way progressive philosophy that would become quite popular among many left of center world leaders in the 1990s. But Mitterrand is probably most important for working closely with the Germans to establish the 1992 treaty that set up the modern European Union. Mitterrand is thus often regarded as the other great founding father of the EU, along with Helmut Kohl, who we talked about last time. Next up, we got Yishtak Shamir, Prime Minister of Israel from 1983 to 1984 and 1986 to 1992. Shamir was the second Israeli Prime Minister from the right-wing Likud party, which oversaw a contentious period of nationalist rule in that country, spanning from much of the late 1970s into the early 90s. Before Israel became an independent country in 1948, Shamir had been active in the underground Jewish resistance that staged terrorist attacks against the territory's British rulers. And this reputation for being cozy with extreme nationalists cast a long shadow over his political career. In power, Shamir's government was a proponent of Jewish settlement in the Palestinian territories of the Gaza Strip and the West Bank, and he significantly increased Jewish immigration to Israel more broadly. Relations with the Palestinians under the leadership of Yasser Arafat, who we discussed in the last video, accordingly deteriorated with a big increase in Israeli-Palestinian violence. Shamir was also notable for being in charge at the time of the 1991 Gulf War, which saw Israel get bombed by Saddam Hussein's Iraq. Prime Minister Shamir's decision to not strike back was seen as an important act of restraint that prevented the war from escalating. And just to flesh out this list slightly, and because she will not be a ruin for much longer, I thought it might be fun to include one other person that Gerald Scarfe did a portrait of in his collection. Elizabeth II, Queen of the United Kingdom from 1952 to present, as well as head of the British Commonwealth. Queen Elizabeth is the longest serving monarch in British history, and also one of the longest serving monarchs of any country ever. She recently celebrated 70 years on the throne, having taken over when she was just 25. The British monarchy is, of course, just a figurehead institution these days, and to the extent Elizabeth has had any political agenda, it has simply been keeping herself and her family popular and relevant in a modern democratic world. Through her example, she has done a lot to set the global standard of how constitutional monarchs should behave in terms of being very dignified and unemotional, and she has traveled extensively as a goodwill ambassador to strengthen ties with Britain allies. There's always been a fair bit of discussion as to whether or not Queen Elizabeth has much of an inner life or if she's just kind of nothing more than what you see and doesn't really have opinions or thoughts on anything beyond just doing the job she believes God has assigned her. A lot of the Queen's hold on people's imaginations is tied to how long she has lived and how many historic figures she has met along the way. Even in the 90s, she was increasingly seen as the last living link to another time. And when she dies, it will almost certainly be seen as a final symbolic close to the 20th century. So there you have it. Five more world leaders from the early 1990s that everyone should know, in addition to the 15 we looked at the other day. Although I guess Rajiv Gandhi is really more of an 80s leader. Thatcher too, really. But in any case, the reason why it is important to learn about all of these guys and gals is that they collectively embodied a very important period in late 20th century history, a period in which many of the prevailing political and economic assumptions of that century were being challenged like never before. Many of these leaders were reformers or proponents of bold new ideas. Some went too far, others didn't go far enough, but 
In either case, they helped set the stage for what was to come next, which was the leaders of the mid to late 90s, who were generally more pragmatic and in many ways more successful in helping usher their countries into the phase of economic growth and political stability that defined that era. And perhaps someday we will look at who they were and what they did, or some other equally interesting decade. In any case, let me know your thoughts and ideas in the comments below, and I would be particularly interested to know if you have ever seen a good collection of world leaders from some random era somewhere, akin to these portraits or this book. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week. Thank you.